and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. I'm Ari. I'm Sarah. I'm Kim. And I'm Josh. I'm Ari. Today we are going to be going over a short I'm Ari. story. Oh, wait. Yeah, we know. You don't know. I think that's been established. <laughs> okay. Today we're going to be going over. That's Josh. A short story it's called Lab Rats, and it's a really, really good story. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. I went over. Uh, I found Lab Rats by G. M. Molnar in the Daily Science Fiction, which is an online uh, publication where they publish a science fiction short story every day. And uh, Lab Rats caught my attention, and I thought it would be something that we should definitely discuss on our show. Uh, and I have some friends that actually own rats. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, Gina owns rats. Uh, Danielle owns rats. Uh, Which Danielle? The Danielle from Literary Gladiators? No, uh, the Danielle that we went to high school with. I thought she had gerbils, not rats. Gerbils don't have very long lifespans. I'm pretty sure she has rats now. Mm -hmm. Anyway. But the discussion starter I have is this. After reading this piece, how would you describe humanity, what they feel is their place within nature, and what you feel really is their place within nature? Well, mice are the most intelligent mammals, animals on the planet. I know Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, argues that, mice and dolphins. Uh, dolphins are the second most intelligent. <laughs> but no. Uh, to, they know the most about humanity. To be more serious, I really just... Based off of what you just said, I, it kind of brings me immediately to the line, cancer chemicals do feel guilty, inflicting harm on them in the name of science. Mm. That, that what you just said kind of brings me to that line. We, we, ex we discussed exactly that in our discussion of uh, guinea pig on the power of reason. And, but this, I think, does a better job uh, depicting the uh, direct human Thought. It's shorter and it's more to the point, I think. Yeah, I would say that much. And I think, the, and I think that uh, the professor really brings about uh, the arguments that can be made. However, there are far more arguments that can be made on top of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, good. But I think that one question is probably the most important thing in the story. Mm -hmm. do, do, are you, and I think we talked about this a little earlier... I think there on the subject of euthanasia, is it like, is it? Do you feel guilty inflicting harm in the name of science? Or it, with euthanasia, it wouldn't be science; it would be not science. But in this case, I think it would be science. that. But the other important question is when the young man, who's an alien, mm -hmm. brings up Spoilers. this. You've finished all the research on your subjects. You can't transfer them to any other facility or use them for something else. You can only destroy them or free them. What do you do? And I think that in itself really says the most about how humanity feels is there, uh, that they are the most important and uh, dominant. I would say destroying them or freeing species. them are the same thing. Depends on how you look at it. Depends on the qual the quality of life. Right. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say. I think Sarah was about to say something. Yeah, yeah. For the rats, like if you're letting them out, it really depends where you're releasing them. Mm -hmm. It probably won't go well. Um, I personally, for me, like I'm so like in love with animals so much. I mm -hmm. I see so cl clearly like they feel things like people feel things. Like why would you put them through anything? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I will agree with this, but I found just the professor and the student just to be like almost cartoonish like the professor was just so pro um oh yes like we need to strictly use them for research um and like they don't feel things like we don't have to take good care of them i feel like the student was so pro like yes these are creatures and they they have similar characteristics this just this, this makes me think of this is going to be kind of a weird thing but it is it is on topic i a few years back, I forget exactly when, I, w I watched this countdown of, of top 50, I think, scariest anti-drug public service announcements, which is a fun time. I, I literally just watched a video, that video like, the other night, and there it was, was only one, 10 of them, not 50. Uh, well, I, I love watching those things because I'm a weirdo and they're kind of interesting. Straight up. Straight up. They're kind of interesting. 
Straight up. They're interesting from like a they're interesting from a historical perspective on various subjects, but there this goes on. This there was this one for an, it was an anti cocaine ad. I believe it was put out by the Partnership for Drug Free America in the eighties. This it shows, is crack. It's not, not that. Cocaine. It is not that one. <laughs> It is, they have, a, it starts with this cute little lab rat in a little cage, and they start talking about how, how the brain gets rewired when a person does cocaine over and over that they keep going back for, and it shows this lab rat constantly, he takes cocaine pellet, he eats it, he starts going, this, this, this rat, like, his fur gets messed up and everything, it's I, the I, real I know one. it's when you're talking and then about. at the end, he just keeps taking it until the rat dies, and that disturbed me, because I'm pretty sure that was, that was not a fake dead rat at the end. I think it was a real one. And... I just thought, about, whenever I think of that, and it, it's a pretty scary ad because of obviously the implications of what cocaine does to a person. Um, but not, but just because they filmed a rat slowly committing suicide via drugs to warn people not to do drugs. They tortured an animal to death for scientific reasons. But that's how we engage in our experiment. Uh, it in is, our, but it's... Progress it for humanity, that is. Here's my view of all this. Um, I haven't really said much yet about it. I would, and I'm saying would here, I would sacrifice one life if it were to save a million. Mm. It just feels, it just feels. Yeah, I remember you had made that argument, and it's a, it's a legitimate Wait, argument. I made that yeah. argument? When we went over guinea pig. Oh, and so what I would say is that if giving a rat a disease and by watching the rat's behavior, you actually do come up with a cure that could save millions of people. Hmm. That rat is... Now, it's not the same if you have to keep try, if you keep killing rats, like a million rats to save a million people. That's not mm -hmm. the same. But if it's one rat to save a million people, think about that. Mm -hmm. Correction, it doesn't even have to be people. It could be one person to save a million rats. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask the question about the scenario uh, from what the young man presented. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Would you, if you could only destroy them or free them, which would you do? The rats. Yes. And they had no other purpose. So you're saying destroy the rats or free the rats after all the experiments were done and they were still alive? Correct. So were they infected with anything? It depends. They didn't. They didn't specify. Well, it, obviously, if they're infected with something, you destroy them. Mm -hmm. But if it, but the, it, it, it's the if, it, if it's like bubonic plague or something, you destroy it. If it's, <laughs> if, if the rats are like in in a state enough to be you know watched and kept by human beings, if that is considered freeing the rats, as in removing them from the lab where they will be taken care of for the rest of their probably shortened lifespan, but they'll live it out in relative comfort. But that's not. We're not like again. You have to expand on what the what the. What, what the definition of freeing is. Like you have just, to be a little more specific. If we're like unless releasing, that's really all it's If we're releasing that's, them outside of my house, that's a different thing. The young man had to say. I would perfect. probably say that if the rats, like, it actually has to depend on what, actually what Kim said is very interesting. Um, if the rats were to be more, if they've lived, but they would just live very uncomfortable and very uh, not... Yeah, if uncomfortable lives, I'd want them to be destroyed so that they can just get the pain out and over with. If the rats will, could live a life without being in pain, without being in discomfort, without being uncomfortable, even if it was short, I would free them. It depends on, it depends on, the, on how the rats are feeling. If we don't know how the rats are feeling, which is possible, then you got to free them. Like, mm -hmm. like you have to. You, mm -hmm. There's no other option because mm -hmm. you don't know. But if you do know, then that would be my scenario. Mm -hmm. I would think that, as far as uh, that is, con I think that as long as they're not going to hurt any other people or animals. I oh, I already like, told you. If they have an infection, you got to kill them. Yeah. Then I think that it is. I think that it is the most humane thing to do is to free them. And I think going back to your previous point, I think that it it sounds very. Uh, uh, something like the native tribes would do, but we need to provide the, we need to, I would say, as it, it sounds like something 
the, the Native Americans would do, uh, create heroes out of these particular rats. If one rat is going to sacrifice themselves in order to find a cure for millions of others, that rat needs to be treated as a martyr. Where Mar martyrs are extremely... Um, you take a, you, yeah. you have, I think, granted, these uh, professors and scientists and doctors, mm -hmm. they cre they'll... Uh, well, it doesn't have to them, be it's just, any of that. Even if it's just a number, uh, it, granted, that's uh, even if the, the rat goes by a particular number. Well, hey, Josh, it doesn't have to be like professors and scientists and doctors. Like, it could just be cosme it, it cosmetic could be, testers. It could be, no, 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 forget that. It could be anybody. Like, it, like For example, yeah. like, th well, this particular person didn't get caught or died, but he was still could have been a martyr had he been caught. Mm -hmm. Oscar Schindler. Mm -hmm where he saved 1,100 Jews, mm -hmm. but easily could have been just mm. gone because the Nazis could have caught him and that would have been it. Mm. 1,100 people were saved because mm. one man put his life at risk. The rat mm -hmm. doesn't have a choice, though. It's in the hands of the, the humans. So it people it doesn't have a choice, it but if we, can make, if we can make Michael Jackson a martyr, I'm pretty sure we can make a particular rat that has created, uh, that has uh, caused, or the rat that provided humanity with a, an answer to a, a particular food being a carcinogen, or the idea that cocaine puts holes in your heart, or a cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. I think that, that particular rat should be deemed as... A, a hero. Martyr. The a hero martyr, would yeah. be the person who found it. The, the, yeah. the, bat, the rat would be the, the martyr. The rat would be the martyr. Yeah, I think the rat should be. Although a martyr I, is a type of hero. I I, there's a couple things that this discussion yeah. reminds me of. It reminds me of... Well, this, um, this, is, this is more of a semi-related thing. There's a young adult novel that was published in 2015 called Placebo Junkies, which is about a... Um, a uh, I think she's a 17-year-old girl who starts uh, participating in trials of medications just to make money because her boyfriend's dying of cancer. And she starts to experience these very, very bizarre side effects. I haven't read it, but it's, it reminds me of that. And I think putting a human face on, you know, medical testing kind of might make people open up to the ethical choices. And that seems like an interesting tie-in to this. It, this also reminds me, this discussion of martyring also reminds me of the story of Henrietta Lacks. Yes. You guys know about her? I've heard either the, in, the immortality. The, the immortal life of Henrietta. The immortal, immortal life of Henrietta. Yeah. yeah, that does... Because she didn't have much of a choice, and a lot of that had to do with racial issues. Oh yeah, they're like that's another thing. It that sounds like a purity thing. Mm -hmm. There was like that was well, pretty horrifying what happened to her, mm -hmm. and now she she is immortal, like the like the book says, because mm -hmm. of horrible horrible injustices towards her. Mm -hmm. But in a way, advanced science in, in a number of ways. It's these are and very it helped all people, not just. Oh yeah, the white population. It, it helped it's everybody. Made hu it helped with huge advances in cancer research. Um, so these are interesting tie-ins that I think could be brought to a discussion of of like this this particular matter, as opposed to just focusing on the whole humans are bad and view other people as as lower. And so what happens when aliens look at us as lower? Kind of thing that the story's going. The aliens or? actually, the or the young man who's an alien sees. Both as equal. Yeah, that's what which, I, that's what I would like. Which is what it was interesting. Rats can be in love the same way as the professor can be in love with his wife. Mm -hmm. But uh, the one thing that I picked out was the arguments that the humans made about releasing the rats. They carry disease. They chew up buildings and crops. They reproduce at an alarming rate. And they destroy every environment which they are placed. Oh, what does that remind you of? Let's mm. let's let's look at humans. The Columbian Exchange, for one, where we uh, exchanged uh, we exchanged disease, and the uh, just look at the pharmaceutical and the cancer industries, which is arguable. And but also look what happened in like the 1600s, 1700s. Mm -hmm. You uh, and uh, there's uh, not to mention the other species that we drove into endangerment or extinction mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. our practices. And then what you said about hunting chewing buildings, sport. I mean, that you got 9-11. Uh, 
Yeah, you and, have, uh, and if you look at humanity as, as a complete, as as a, com if you look at humanity, who as one, are really the rats here? But you that's know, why yeah. I'm so. A Let's lot continue. Of, a lot of well, one second. One of the things I'm very keen on is my myself is that I hate seeing people who do things that animals would do, like not non-humans would do, like negative things. But when we could be so much, we could be but, such a better. But we're one and the same, so it's not really much about. A, a rat is should not be deemed as a derogatory term. Because that's that's what I'm saying. I'm saying animal. because we're not as good. Mm. What, sorry, correction. We are pretty much the same as all other animals. Mm -hmm. We are all yes. animals. We have to stop Absolutely. looking at each but other. But the difference the is that since chain. we have the intelligence, mm. we should put that to use. Mm -hmm. Use it as a tool. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. And let's continue. Yeah, we have to look going. at each other as equals, not as mm -hmm. they, not as like this hierarchy of we're at the top of the food chain. Therefore, these little dudes at the bottom of the food chain. Mm -hmm. We can laugh at them, point at them, and, and say, "Ha ha, we're going to make you grow ears and for, for science." I mean, that, I mean, because it'll make Evie upset. Growing years for science has its point, but still. I wanted to continue with uh, the fact that uh, with uh, the idea that rats and other animals overpopulating, and how we ourselves have overpopulated more than we can handle, yeah. but almost seven million people. Which... Tribute, please help control the human population by spaying or and neutering your humans. <laughs> but. I think that, in a way, we also restrict ourselves where we create these because all of our borders and the way that resources are distributed and you have the, the, uh, the tyranny and the greed from the authorities mm -hmm. to contend with. Mm -hmm. Number four is very much like number two, where we seem to... What was that one again? Number two was the idea... Uh, four, I mean... Oh. Uh, destroy every environment which they are placed, where yes. we oh, waste goodness. resources, we dump, we dump chemicals into the oceans, we use everything for our gain. We elect presidents that have absolutely yeah. no idea about I, the EPA. We hunt, we hunt animals for sport. If, like, humans didn't exist on the planet, the planet would just flourish if we weren't mm. the ones here. Um, human extinction is inevitable. Yeah. We're going to die eventually. We're going to drive ourselves up. into extinction. Yeah. It's, there's no such... To me, there is... Uh, you have climate change, but it's not... Climate change, to me, does not mean the end of the world. To no. me, we'll get there, means, we'll get there long before I that. Think there and also, be, I always say to people, there's a difference between climate change and global warming. They're not the same thing. Mm. I think, I think George Carlin was the most accurate. He said it was a scam because he said that we are going to go. We are going to go extinct like the dinosaurs. It, but would you rather go extinct sooner or later, I think is the question here. I don't know if it's what we'd rather do. It's the, What I we're think, going to end up doing because we're stupid and yeah. can't end up. In the year 35, 35. We can't, da, 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 we can't da, da, da. human good. We can't environment good. Mm. People still don't even I didn't know environment was a verb. Everything is a verb if you try hard enough. <laughs> okay. That's what he said. Does uh, anybody have uh, anything else they had uh, wanted to add? It's an interesting story, although, I think it, like I said, it was straight to the point, but I feel that it was a little lacking. It was. It's more interesting honestly. for the ethical questions it poses rather than the actual story. I mean, granted, the story of, of humans trying, or aliens trying to see why they shouldn't blow up humans has been around it, since I feel, literally every science fiction story. I feel this should be a science fiction story or a moral message about what's going on. It, it should just, not be both. I think that it serves its purpose, and I think it's good for a short, short story. I think if it was a little bit longer, but it was still just as direct, I would have liked it a little it more. It just laid out everything for you. Like, I feel like, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't to a To me, fan it, it didn't. I think that there are things that you yourself still have to figure out. I don't, it doesn't tell you that, uh, I think the only way it tells you that, uh, humans, uh, are, humans think that they are the greatest of the great is at the end where it almost seems like the young the young man face bones. I can absolutely be certain that I enjoyed guinea pig a little more than this one. This is okay. Guinea pig the different guinea pigs seem to have more humor to it. And there was more of a uh, I conversation. Thought, I thought guinea pig had a more general message, but that was just me my thinking. There was a bit more of a story, but it was longer too. I feel like like some of the lines were a bit over dramatic. Like there's one line, or they were um, they were talking about um, 
the eyes of the student. And it, it explained they were filled with an unreadable, unsettling kind of intelligence that the elderly man had not encountered before, conflicted. I feel like it's saying that the professor had never encountered anyone in his life that showed any sort of concern for ethics. I, I feel like that was that, a bit... I think it was more so unusual. the fact that... I think it was more so the fact that they were trying to build up that this was an alien, but they uh, didn't want to reveal I that it was an alien. I think the science fiction elements yeah. were particularly well done. I think that this story has... It's, like I said, it's been tackled by... 99, not maybe not 99, maybe like 47% of alien invasion movies where they're trying to find reasons not to blow us up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, okay. And, and, and what, they kind of, the older you get and the more you read about the things that humans have done, you kind of side with the aliens a little bit more. Yeah. I see your point with the alien eye thing, though. I didn't, I didn't put those mm -hmm. two together. You're right. But yeah, I would say that I, 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 I liked it as a, for what it was worth. I liked that, mm -hmm. I thought it was, uh, and I think it's interesting. A thought-provoking story. I think it's interesting like we're it. going over a lot of stories having to do with uh, animals. Because we've done all creatures, great and small. We're doing, um, right now we're doing uh, lab rats. We're going to be doing creation of the animal people. Next time, I believe. We should be. We should do all the other. All the other. It's actually, I read it more than a decade ago. It's 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 not just, oh my god, dead dog. But that's a top, that's what's up yet for another time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah. interesting. Why? I'm a, based off the question of would I anthologize it? I would. I would. It's have, not in an anthology. It's on. I found it on Daily Science Fiction, which is uh, an online. It's online publications. They publish a story every day. I think that this is anthology worthy, though. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. I've definitely read way worse flash fiction in uh, my I've life. I've read worse, but uh, I mean, it was it was like mediocre for me. Yeah, I, I've read worse, but I wouldn't. It's not. It's nothing. It's nothing remarkable. It needs some yeah. work chopping a little bit. But I've definitely read way worse. If you've been in creative writing classes, you've also definitely read worse, probably. That's that might not sound like a hearty recommendation, but I do think the ethical things brought in it are interesting, yeah. to say the least. Mm -hmm. I'm ready then. If you're interested in checking out this short, short story, I will leave a link down below to where you can find it online. Mm -hmm. It's on dailysciencefiction.com where you will find a science fiction short story every day. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep, keep reading. reading. Buy cruelty free if you can afford it. Yes. <laughs>